Friday, March 29th, 2019, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the U.S. budget deficit for February reached a record. It was the biggest budget deficit in the month. Uh, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, of course, before that, I'll have a look at what the markets are doing this morning. Um, it's uh, just going past 7.30 a.m. London. So uh, let's uh, see what's going on here. So, yeah, spot gold is about $20 lower than when I did my video yesterday. Um, yes. Um, was there a reason for gold uh, going lower yesterday as much as it did or silver? No, but that's the way the precious metals market uh, are, you know, and have been for a long time. And unfortunately, will uh, keep being for a while um, longer, in my opinion. It's controlled, of course, uh, by the uh, bullion banks, by the paper market, COMEX, LBMA, by the central banks. What do I think happened yesterday? Well, um, a combination of things, the very weak pound, you know, the pound dropped uh, over 1% against the dollar. So that helped the dollar a little bit, even though the euro didn't go anywhere, really. The euro's actually uh, held on well. Uh, yeah, so they took it as an excuse, I guess, to um, bash gold. It was looking fairly good technically, uh, I would say. Uh, they want to make gold uh, like a, just a not normal commodity, and that's the way to succeed. That's part of the manipulation as well, to make people look at gold as a trading instrument to make money. Even though we know that back in 1913, when asked what gold was, J.P. Morgan, the J.P. Morgan, said uh, gold is money and everything else is credit. So... Uh, even though I, I cover the price of uh, uh, gold every morning, I personally uh, don't trade my gold, and I recommend people not to. If they want to trade, they can trade, you know, for fun, the futures and whatever ETFs. But uh, your money insurance is not there to be traded. So what's my take on this? My take is it gives people even a bigger opportunity to to uh, protect themselves for future mayhem in the monetary uh, system. And uh, this is what I'm going to talk about today uh, after I, I've finished looking at the market. So, yeah, we're uh, uh, here at 1287. Silver is just at $15. It's down about two cents. The range has been uh, 1497 to 1507. Uh, the, the high in gold overnight actually has been 1292.90. And the low 1286.60. Uh, the stock market, uh, the Dow is up 65, up a quarter um, at 25,781. SP uh, is also up a quarter of a percent at 28.22. NASDAQ 100 future up 0.4 of a percent at 73.50. Uh, the pound got down to almost 130 yesterday. Right now it's at 130.80. So up a 36 pips or just over a quarter of a percent. So today is March 29th, uh, 2019. Uh, at 11 p.m. today, the UK should officially leave uh, the EU uh, with a deal. Or, and if the UK doesn't have a deal, it should leave without a deal. But of course, everything's up in the air. There's some uh, extensions. Uh, I think the it's a mess. I don't think anyone really knows what's going on. Uh, I think the thing that people know that will probably happen is that Theresa May, you know, government is going to fall or she's going to have to leave as the prime minister. Anyway, uh, euro, as I said, is fairly strong. It's at 1.1236. Uh, up uh, 14 pips. But... Uh, not that weak. Uh, dollar uh, yen one ten sixty unchanged, and the dollar is down 0.2 of a percent against the Chinese yuan at six seventy two fifty. WTI crude fifty nine fifty eight up uh, just over a third of a percent, and Brent crude sixty seven twenty two 
up 0.2. Uh, bond markets, uh, the yields did drop quite a bit yesterday during the day. I think we got down to 233 or 34 in the 10 year right now. And that backed up a little bit. Uh, the uh, 10 year yield now is at uh, 240. Uh, the three month uh, is at 243. So things improved a bit. So the budget deficit, am I surprised there is a record budget deficit ever for any month in history, in the history of the United States, even though the US economy has been doing so well, it's recovering so great, unemployment so low, uh, you know, uh, you would expect that uh, tax receipts to be going through the roof and that we wouldn't be running, you know, the US wouldn't be running these huge deficits. But uh, here's the story. Uh, Reason.com by a guy called Eric Bohm he says February's budget deficit was the largest in American history. Before I go into the uh, this story as well, I wanted to uh, show you yesterday we had the uh, final numbers for the U.S. Uh, GDP for the fourth quarter. Um, I. The, this, the GDP numbers are published like three times. You have the prelimin, uh, the advanced preliminary and the final. So yesterday was the final. And uh, lo and behold, it was revised down from the, uh, prelim, uh, from the preliminary number uh, at 2.6 to 2.2. So not great growth there, 2.2. And I wanted to show you a chart. Uh, and I'm not making any political judgments on anyone. I'm just looking at the data. But uh, here we go, US GDP, US, here we go, US gross domestic product. Um, and this is going back to 2000, uh, let's see, February 2008. Of course, we had the recession after the great financial crisis. Uh, and then Pretty much after September, GDP uh, growth was positive. There were a few months there in uh, 2014 and also 2015 when it was negative. Uh, but you can see there, uh, has any, if you look at that chart, has anything changed since 2017 uh, under the new administration? Is GDP really looking strong? No. And we have forecasts by the Atlanta Fed, by the New York Fed, by Goldman Sachs. And I do agree that these people's forecasts are not always great, but they're looking at GDP almost at zero for the first quarter. So keep that in mind. So back to the budget deficit story. Here we go. So I'll read here from, uh, from this article. The Feds are $234 billion in the red. Looking for hope? Senator Mike Enzi has some ideas. Uh, well, I probably won't look at this, uh, Senator Mike Enzi, but I just wanted to show you uh, how bad things are fiscally. And this is not even uh, in a recession. Can you imagine? Uh, when, because you know, normally in this Keynesian run world, when there is a recession, that's when governments come in like they did after the crisis of 08, and run huge deficits to cover the slowdown in the economy. But right now we're running huge deficits and they're gonna be a trillion dollar plus for the next three, four years. And uh, we're not even in a recession, even though I think we are uh, starting a recession really. So the US Treasury reports that the federal government ran a record-breaking budget deficit in February. Meanwhile, the incumbent president, who has presided over a sharp increase in the national debt, has released a budget proposal that projects a trillion dollar annual deficits for the rest of his time in office. I'm talking about 2019 and also 2012. So that's what the author says. And I continue quoting, the Treasury announced Friday that the federal government spent $234 billion more than it brought in during February, breaking the record for the largest monthly budget deficit. Barack Obama's Treasury Department set the previous record in February 2012, 
with a deficit of 231 billion. So well done there, uh, President Trump. You've broken a record. Uh, there you go, guys. Uh, he's making America great again uh, in the deficit front and the debt front, of course. Uh, not to say that all the other presidents didn't do the same thing. So this is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, is the president administration really different from the others? Um, at the time, President Obama had just delivered his latest budget proposal to Congress which anticipated a trillion dollar annual deficits for the rest of the decade, almost identical to the projections offered by Donald Trump in his 2019 budget proposal del delivered earlier this month. So I'll stop here because he actually goes on to say how under Obama, uh, those trillion dollar deficits actually shrunk. And it was mainly because of the opposition in the House and Congress, you know, the Republicans. But right now, it doesn't, you know, President Trump doesn't seem to have any opposition because it's the Republicans that have, pa have passed the budget, the past budgets that have allowed for this uh, fiscal disaster to uh, keep uh, occurring. So I thought it would be interesting to look at this, you know. Um, some of you, uh, one of the viewers, a uh, regular viewer, a longtime subscriber, asked me, uh, is it safe to uh, invest in 52-week uh, or one-year T-bills? Uh, and uh, I said, yeah, it, it, it's not, uh, uh, you know, I, I would uh, prefer doing the three-month T-bill because uh, it's pretty much the same rate and you don't uh, have the time risk. You know, a lot could happen in a year. In three months, not so much. Um, you know, interest rates could spike in a year very quickly. And instead of getting, uh, you know, three and a half on the one year, you're still getting the two and a half, for example. But in the three month, you can, all, you can always adjust and get higher rates. But the other thing I said is, uh, you know, it's not for me to judge you, where you, uh, who you lend your money to, but effectively by buying T-bills, uh, even though, yes, uh, technically, you're lending money to Uncle Sam or the U.S. government. But uh, de facto, I would say you're lending money to the military industrial complex, to the deep state. And uh, yes, I know there's a lot of stories out about the Russiagate, uh, Q. I think these are all distractions. It doesn't change the fact of the matter that uh, the present administration... Uh, it's not really changing things. It's uh, bullying countries around the world. Uh, it's running huge deficits. It's increasing even more uh, military uh, spending. You know, it's, uh, it's doing everything it can uh, for the big uh, banks, for corporate America. So there you go. Do you really, you know, that's why on days like yesterday, uh, yes, it's very frustrating. Um, to look at the price of gold go down, but uh, we we need to think of gold more as money, as an insurance, uh, something that you hold. Uh, you know, gold. This is a this is a five dollar uh, gold coin from eighteen ninety nine. This is what people used to use as five dollars, so it's about a quarter of an ounce and a quarter a nineteen sixty four half uh, a quarter. Sorry, silver quarter. So that's uh, the way to look at it. Frustrating, but the other option is to, if you're able to have uh, a good amount of savings, uh, yeah, do you finance the bankers and the military industrial complex, or do you uh, protect yourself? You know, that's up to you to decide. Before I go, I'd like to recommend a video uh, on the YouTube channel called Best Evidence by John Titus. And uh, this is his latest video, came out yesterday. I'll put it up in the cards and in the description. And he just shows you how the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve, you know, how much you should trust them. Uh, and then you make up your mind. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, if you enjoy my videos but haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. 
Uh, make sure you also hit the little notification bell above to be uh, reminded or advised or notified of my new videos. You can follow me also on Twitter, Steemit, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.